many countries have progressive income tax systems in place. What this means is that in many countries, high income earners are taxed at a higher rate than low income earners. Now, income taxes in general are very important because they generate a lot of revenue, but they are also very important to equalize the income distribution. So we've seen in lecture five that the inequality in pre-tax incomes in many countries is a lot higher than the inequality in post-tax incomes. And the main reason for that is progressive, progressive income taxation, sometimes combined with transfers, but uh, progressive income taxation plays an important role. Now, one problem or potential challenge with progressive income taxation is that it can be inefficient from a welfare perspective. So this is what we want to look at here in this video. So what we want to do is we want to compare the efficiency of a progressive income tax compared to a proportional tax, so a flat tax. The so flat tax means everyone's income, regardless of whether it's high or, or low, is always taxed at the same rate. Okay? And so we'll, we'll start with a very simple example here and show that progressive income tax systems can be inefficient. Does that mean that they're bad, that we shouldn't have them? No, it's, this is just to point out that there can be economic costs. These costs may well be worth it because we may value an equalization of the income distribution more than those efficiency losses. So what we're doing here is we start with a simple example that is from Gruber's book, whereby we have two types of workers, a high wage worker earning $20 an hour and a low wage worker earning $10 an hour. And in this simple example, we assume that the supply and demand curves for both types of workers have the same slopes. Now that, that will be important because if that's the case, we will see that progressive income taxes are inefficient. We will also see in another video that if they differ, if especially the supply curves differ, progressive tax systems may actually be more efficient than a flat tax. Okay, so so it's, it's not entirely clear which one is more efficient and which one less. It really depends on the behavior of, of workers. Okay, but for the moment, we assume that the labor supply and demand for both two types of workers is the same. So let's start uh, with this numerical example. So people have in total a thousand hours they can spend on either leisure or work or both. And then they earn however many hours they work multiplied by their wage rate. So the high wage earner earns 10, uh, sorry, earns 20 euro an hour, the low wage earner 10, 10 euro an hour. Okay? So if we have no tax, um, no one has an incentive to reduce their, their work hours. So in the no tax case, um, their work hours are a thousand each per year. And then obviously the low wage earner would earn exactly 10,000 euro. Now, the first type of tax system that we're going to look at is a proportional tax. So in that case, everyone is taxed at 20%. So that, given that the supply curve is the same for both workers, which we will illustrate on the next slide, leads also for both workers to the same reduction in work hours. And so, so instead of a thousand, they now work a little bit less than 900 hours a year. Right? And that reduction in work hours leads then also to a welfare loss. Right? And that welfare loss comes from both low wage workers and high wage workers. So here is the one for low wage, here's the one for high wage workers and for high wage workers, because they, they earn a higher wage to begin with, that dead weight loss is obviously larger. Now, the comparison here is with progressive taxation. 
the the example is chosen in such a way and you can read about this in in Gruber's book in chapter 20 the example is chosen in such a way that the tax revenue is roughly the same in both cases right but now what we're doing is we're not taxing the low wage earners at all but we're going to tax the high wage earners at a marginal tax rate of 60 percent okay so, so any every dollar of income above 10,000 euro is taxed at 60 percent so what does that do well for the for the um low wage earner it's the same as if no one gets taxed right so 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 they don't have any incentive to, to reduce their work hours so the dead weight loss is zero however for the for the high wage earners they now because the tax is so high have a massive incentive to decrease their work hours why well because the opportunity cost of leisure is getting a lot lower right because the foregone earnings from spending an hour not working are a lot less when the taxes are so high and that then results in a much bigger welfare loss in total so we want to look at this now graphically um, and again comparing here on the left low wage workers and on the right high wage workers so what do we see here the first case for which the supply curves S2 are relevant. So this is the one here and the one here. And the two shaded areas that you can see here. This is the dead weight loss if the income of each person is taxed at 20%. Okay? So, so what happens basically, the tax works as if we were to shift the supply curve up by the equivalent amount of 20%, which is obviously higher for the high income earner and lower for the low income earner. Um, and then we have again this wedge opening up between the gross wage here and the net wage, which would be which would be somewhere here. Let's call it W N. Okay, and, and the same same would be here. Here we have the gross wage and here we have the net wage and anything in between is the tax revenue and so so those those two triangles here are dead weight loss now suppose instead that we have a progressive tax whereby the workers on the left don't get taxed at all so there is no welfare loss here so so the the, the point a is the the one that that uh, that, that is the equilibrium for them. So they earn a wage of 10 euro an hour, they work a thousand hours. Whereas for the workers on the right, we actually um, have a tax of 60%. Now you see here that this is not drawn uh, to, to scale, but the relevant uh, supply curve then is this one, is S3. Okay, so we have now a very, high tax so there is a huge wedge between the gross wage that they get paid and the, the net wage but obviously there's also workers would work a lot fewer hours right so it's either that each worker works a lot fewer hours or fewer workers are willing to work to begin with now let's look at the welfare loss in this case well in this case the welfare loss would be the shaded area that that you can see now uh, th that that you could see before which is this one okay plus an additional shaded area that is that okay the two together that's the welfare loss when we have when we tax the high wage workers at 60 percent and now let's think well in under what conditions is the flat tax does it come with a more with with a higher welfare loss and under what conditions does the progressive tax come with a with a greater welfare loss yeah. so let's let's look at this uh, for for a second so what i'll do is i'll give those those surfaces names so this is surface a this is surface b and this is surface c yeah. now the dead weight loss for the flat tax what is that well it's a plus C. The deadweight loss for 
the progressive tax is B plus C. Okay, because now we have only a welfare loss for the high wage workers, but not, but not for the low wage workers. Okay. So we can also immediately see under what condition, um, and I'll, I'll just zoom in here, under what condition the dead weight loss for the progressive tax is greater than its counterpart for the flat tax. It's, it's greater, that holds if, uh, if area, apologies, if area not C, if area B is greater than area A. Okay, so what it means is that that area that's shaded in orange here, B is greater than the triangle A. Okay, because if we have a progressive tax, we will not have the dead weight loss that is the triangle A, but instead we, we will have the dead weight loss that is the triangle B. And if the supply and demand curves have the same slope, then B will always be greater than A. Okay, and so that means that the progressive tax is actually worse for a, from an efficiency perspective than a flat tax. Again, this does not mean that a progressive tax is undesirable. It may be desirable from an equity perspective, but it's not desirable from an efficiency perspective. And then what a government decides on depends on its preferences and the preferences of, of, of the voters for equity versus efficiency. So again, here on this slide, you will just then see uh, an, an explanation again of what those different triangles measure and, and what the different deadweight losses are. So what we've seen here is an example for a, a progressive income tax being less efficient than a flat tax.